Hello creeps! Anda and Mosley here and today I wanted to write a short story using the first line of every Stephen King book. If you guys have been on my channel for any amount of time, you know that I've made quite a few videos about Stephen King. I read his favorite horror book, I watched his least favorite horror movie, I wrote a story using his Twitter. I'll leave all those videos linked down below in case you're interested in more Stephen King stuff after this. But uh, yeah, let's just get into it. Oh shoot, I gotta grab my computer. One second. Very quickly before we begin, I didn't use any novellas, nonfiction, short stories, essays, poems, or anything with an additional author like with Peter Straub. I just use novels. And this is according to Stephen King's website. So if you go to his website, you click on his works and then you can scroll down and it shows you all of his works and it says what type of book it is. I didn't use any anthologies because the first line isn't for the whole book. And I didn't include prologues or forewords because they're, according to Google, separate from the main text as well as because a few of Stephen King's prologues uh, have the same sentence opening. So I thought it would be better to just include the first sentence of the first thing. I think there's one in here because on the ones that I don't have Stephen King books of, I had to use Amazon. I think there was one book where the prologue was so long that I couldn't see the first sentence of the first story. But other than that, I just used the first sentence of each first chapter. I knew this was going to be difficult because it turns out that a lot of them have first names of characters in the first sentences, which I wasn't expecting so many of them to start like that, but a lot of them did. So I did the best I could. Oh, and obviously I didn't use Rage because if you know, you know. Oh, and I didn't use the Green Mile books, the, not the Green Mile, but the Green Mile little sections of books because they're not on Kindle and I couldn't see the first opening line. But other than that, I think I did okay. <laughs> so all together, there are 67 books. What I did was I started with the books that I have of Stephen King's and I just opened them one by one and and typed out their first lines of each one and as I said the ones that I didn't have I just went to Amazon and looked and hit Kindle and then looked at the preview and that showed me the first line of the first chapter and so that's what I used and then after that when I had all of them written out I had to cut them up and then because I I'm just a very visual person so I had to look at them and arrange them into what I thought would be a good place to put them. Don't eat it. Don't eat Stephen King's quotes. Oh no, she's doing it. She's eating it. Oh no. Ma'am? Ma'am? <laughs> no, don't eat it. Don't eat it. When I read you the story, I'll move over and I'll pop up the front cover of each of the books so you can see which sentences came from which books. So now I'm going to read you the story. Let me know what you think and let me know what I should make a story out of next time because I had a lot of fun doing this and I hope you enjoy this story that I wrote using the first line of every Stephen King book. Sorry, I know that the lighting has changed. Let's just get started. I'm really excited to hear what you guys think about this story. Once upon a time, not so long ago, a monster came to the small town of Castle Rock, Maine. The event that came to be known as the Pulse began at 3.03 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the afternoon of October 1st. Jesse could hear the back door banging lightly, randomly, in the October breeze blowing around the house. It was 14 years of hell, all told, but she hardly knew it. George was somewhere in the dark. An old blue Ford pulled into the guarded parking lot that morning, looking like a small tired dog after a long hard run. It was an unmarked car, just some nondescript American sedan a few years old, but the Blackwell tires and the three men inside gave it away for what it was. Pair Don Callahan had once been the Catholic priest of a town, Salem's Lot had been its name, that no longer existed on any map. Louis Creed, who had lost his father at the age of three and who had never known a grandfather, Never expected to find a father as he entered his middle age, but that's exactly what happened, although he called this man a friend, as a grown man must do when he finds a man who should have been his father relatively late in life. And Harry Dunny graduated with flying colors. The terror, which would not end for another 28 years if it ever did end, began, as far as I know or can tell, with a boat made from a sheet of newspaper floating down a gutter swollen with rain. On the second day of October, in a year when a Georgia peanut farmer was doing business in the White House, one of Colorado's great resort hotels burned to the ground. 
For want of a nail, the kingdom was lost. That's how the catechism goes when you boil it down. The two things Sarah remembered about that night later were his run of luck at Wheel of Fortune and the mask. In one way, at least, our lives really are like movies. Start with a blank surface. How long will the magic stay? Somewhere high above, the moon shines down, fat and full, but here in Tarker's Mill, a January blizzard has choked the sky with snow. Um, Warren, you're, um, Warren, these sounds, even in the haze. Almost a month after the death of his wife, Ralph Roberts began to suffer from insomnia for the first time in his life. The world had teeth, and it could bite you with them anytime it wanted. Wake up, genius. It's always darkest before dawn. From 2,000 feet, where Claudette Saunders was taking a flying lesson, the town of Chester Mill gleamed in the morning light like something freshly made and just set down. Half an hour after Tim Jamison's Delta flight was scheduled to leave Tampa for the bright lights and tall buildings of New York, it was still parked at the gate. Daddy, I'm tired, the little girl in the red pants and the green blouse said fretfully. I'm sure I can tell a story. Once in a kingdom called Delane, there was a king and two sons. Three, this is the number of your feet. Tina was blessed, though few farmers would have used such a word with three patches. Riverfield, where his family had grown rice since time out of mind. Roseside Field, where Cod Joffords had grown sharp root pumpkin and corn for those same years and generations, and Son of a Bitch, a thankless tract with most, which mostly grew rocks, blistered, and busted hopes. Oh my god, my friend Archie Cunningham cried out loud. Jack Torrance thought, a vicious little prick. Summer's here. On a very hot day in August of 1994, my wife told me she was going down to the Dairy Rite Aid to pick up a refill on her sinus medication prescription. This is the stuff you can buy over the counter those days, I believe. Sally, what did you ask Andy Bissett? She was squinting at a thermometer and the white light coming through the window. I had a car, but on most days in the fall of 73, I walked to Joyland from Miss Shoplaw's beachside accommodations in the town of Heaven's Bay. I was coming home from school with my mother. The town of Candleton was a poisoned and irradiated ruin, but not dead. After all the centuries, it still twitched with tenebrous life, trundling beetles the size of turtles, birds that looked like small misshapen drag dragonlets, a few stumbling robots that passed in and out of the rotting buildings like stainless steel zombies, their joints squalling, their nuclear eyes flickering. Oh, oh, Jesus, gross. News item from Westover Weekly Enterprise, August 19th, 1966. In a small town, the opening of a new store is big news. After deciding he would get nothing of interest from the two old men who comprised the entire staff of the Weekly Islander, the feature writer from the Boston Globe took a look at his watch, remarked that he could just make the 1.30 ferry back to the mainland if he hurried, thanked them for their time, dropped some money on the tablecloth, weighed it down with a salt shaker so the stiffish onshore breeze wouldn't blow it away, and hurried down the stone steps from the Grey Gulls patio dining area toward Bay Street and a little town below. Kirk Wilcox's boy came around the barracks a lot the year after his father died. I mean, a lot. But nobody ever told him to get out of the way or asked him what in the hail he was doing there again. Audie Odenberg had a 97 Datsun that still ran well in spite of the high mileage, but gas was expensive, especially for a man with no job. And city center was on the far side of town, so he decided to take the last bus of the night. By the time he had passed Portland going north, north on the turnpike, Ben Mayers had begun to feel a not unpleasurable tingle of excitement in his belly. And Billy Summer sits in the hotel lobby waiting for his ride. The man in black fled across the desert and the gunslinger followed. Thinner, the old gypsy man with a rotting nose whispered to William Halleck as Halleck and his wife Heidi came out of the courthouse. It became their motto and Jonesy couldn't for the life of him remember which of them started saying it first. Machine started straightening the paper clips slowly and carefully with his long, strong fingers. He kept doing things without letting himself think about it. During the days after they left the Green Palace that wasn't Oz after all, but which was now the tomb of the unpleasant fellow Roland Scatet had known as the TikTok man, the boy Jake began to range further and further ahead of Roland, Eddie, and Savannah. To the public eye, the spouses of well-known writers are all but invisible, but no one knew it better than Lizzie Landon. It was her third time with live ammunition, and her first time on the draw from the holster Roland had ripped for her. There you have it, my friends. It's definitely not perfect. I was surprised at how challenging this became because a lot of the first lines have either characters, dates, 
or times of year and so it was really hard to keep them straight and together and to only have a few characters in the story. I did the best I could. But yeah, that is a story written from the first line of every Stephen King book. I think I started with like 67-ish books. Here are the ones that I couldn't use. I couldn't use any of the Green Mile ones. I didn't use any of the ones where he had a co-writer, so that was three books. And I also didn't use Rage, so probably ended with about 60 or so books. Anyways, this was still really fun. I really enjoyed it. Let me know what I could make a story out of next. Let me know your favorite Stephen King book because I'm curious. And if you're interested in any other Stephen King videos that I've done, I will again leave those all linked down below in case you are interested. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon with another horror video. Bye guys.